we're gonna go ahead and swatch some fine tech watercolors. I have a little compact set right here that I bought many, many years ago before these were popular and I didn't really have a use for them, but I thought they were very pretty. And then I recently purchased a gold, an individually sold gold um, fine tech from Paper and Ink Arts. So this was purchased from, I wanna say Dick Blick many years ago and this was ordered from Paper and Ink Arts and they were very prompt in sending it to me. And I am always happy to give them a plug because they are a Nashville area company and they've been um, you know, just very friendly to me um, in our dealings. So happy to help them out. So I'm gonna go ahead and swatch these for you guys. The first thing I wanna do though, is I do wanna demonstrate opacity or lack thereof. So we're gonna take a regular old Sharpie, totally not archival, totally don't recommend you use this in your art, but for testing purposes, it is perfectly fine. And we're gonna swatch all of these pretty, pretty colors. And hopefully that'll help you know if the fine tech colors are right for you. Once we finish with the fine techs, we're actually going to uh, swatch some twinkling H2Os. And I believe this is like their tropical set or their waterfall set, something like that. I de-box them and threw away the box. And honestly, the names, that series names are kind of stupid to me. And it includes Royal Satin, which is a purple. Sea Spray, which is a turquoise blue and it's a very pretty color. Celadon, which is not really Celadon at all. It is more like a light Kelly green if you want to use bogus paint color names. Um, mango Freeze, which is a very nice orange color, but a little dark for mango. Just Peachy, which is actually a very raspberry color. Now you guys can see why I think color names like this are stupid. And Iris Petal, which is an iris color, so. Starting with the fine text and then doing the twinkling H2Os. And hopefully you guys will see something you like or you don't like or something that helps you out. And I'm gonna draw another line in black to help with opacity. A caveat about both of these types of pearlescent or metallic watercolors is they all need a little bit of time to activate. So we're going to go ahead and uncap them. And I've worked with all of these before, except for this gold. Um, but I know many of you are watching my watercolor videos, you're watching my watercolor reviews, and I thought you guys might enjoy this, it might help some of you. So, you know, for the sake of completion, I am happy to share this with you. And this, these tend to be a product marketed pretty much only at crafters and card makers. There is zero attempt at courting us artists. I guess they don't care. But these go back and forth. Um, the fine texts were originally marketed towards artists, illuminators, those sort of people. So, um, you know, they're very popular right now with card makers, brush letters. They are a little pricey for as nice, I mean, they are nice but they are a little pricey and you just may not need them in your collection. Now I have other videos on this channel where we talk about pearlescent watercolors. I have reviewed Artist Loft pearlescent watercolors. I have reviewed Kuretake pearlescent watercolors. I have reviewed Niji pearlescent watercolors, and all of those were actually sent to me by my phenomenal artist friend, Sam. And you guys should totally check out her Photoshop brushes. They are comic um, tone brushes, comic effect brushes. I love them. I've been using her shoujo brushes for years, like before we even knew each other. And you can find those, they're free. You can find those at shootingstars.org and you can check the description below for a link. So we're gonna give these a chance to marinate AKA activate. These will take longer than these, but we're gonna go ahead and start with the fine tech, beginning with the gold. And the gold, I've seen videos on Instagram of the gold. Gold is like magic. Of course, unfortunately, Sharpie is a little bit hydrophobic, which means that it is not the best, the best to test with watercolors, but I'm sort of working on a limited supply list. And then we're gonna move into the little palettes that I have. And there's several palette sets available from Fine Tech. Um, I don't just use golds, so I opted to get a 
palette set that has a red, um, sort of a coppery gold, and then a bunch of iridescence. And I actually don't use the iridescence as often as I thought I would. But I've been working them into my convention watercolors. So um, those of you who have purchased Pokemon watercolors from me, you may have gotten some iridescence. That is actually a combination of both of these brands. I have used, oh yeah, barely on camera there. I have used both the Shimmering H2O, Sparkling H2O, Twinkling H2O's, will have the correct name in the description and in the title, but I have used those and um, the Fine Tech Pearlescence. They're really iridescence, they're not just pearlescence. So the difference between iridescence and pearlescence is that pearlescent colors will only reflect either the, the color of the paint is the shiny color or a white tends to be, it tends to be one color of reflection. Whereas iridescence will have multiple colors. So I have no idea if this is gonna show up on camera. It may just be too bad, so sad. But the iridescence in this set, there is a pink iridescence that has a little bit of green. There is a white pearl. There is a green iridescence with a little bit of pink. So it's primarily green with some pink. And then there's a blue iridescence with a little bit of pink. And they're all really pretty. But I think that gold is just wild. Usually when I use gold, um, I use Windsor and Newton's gold ink, which I love, but I was flying and, or I flew to be here. So that was not really an option for me. Couldn't, didn't really want to bring that tiny little glass bottle. I could have, I could have been my checked, but I just didn't want to risk it. But I really like that little cake. It handles, looks, very similar, and uh, we'll find out if it, when it dries how opaque it is. Unfortunately, like I said, the Sharpie's a little bit hydrophobic, so not 100% the best choice. Okay, so now we're on to the Shimmering, Twinkling, Sparkling H2Os, and these are more like a watercolor. They're they're um, they're more of a color than most of these most of the pearlescent and metallic watercolors I've reviewed here. So, you know, you can mix these with just like a little bit of a more opaque watercolor like Sakura Koi, like I do in my con watercolors, and you end up with a really nice, rich, sort of sparkly color. So it's really great, in my opinion, for making things that are special for people. So their OCs or their favorite Pokemon, or um, maybe they're, I've done, oh yeah, I did a painting of a, a young lady. Um, her mother commissioned it and I used these on her clothing and it looked really cute in person. And I don't like using special effects paints because, um, except for, for things that I'm giving to people in person, because I want what I scan to be what it looks like in real life. So these sort of special effects paint, I they do not scan nearly as pretty as they look in real life. So that's just a caveat. So. That is all of the colors, and I'm not gonna read the color names to you again right now because these are wet and um, it'll be a problem. But I'm gonna let these dry and I'll check back in with you guys. All right, guys, these are mostly dry, although not entirely dry. It is wet outside tonight, so it will take a while. And it looks like to me in areas where um, the, the, uh, the water had not been pushed away, these fine tacks are moderately opaque, especially the gold. Um, the others, it really depends on what angle you catch them at, but they've got really nice mica coverage. Yeah, there, see? And you see them iridesce or iridescent, iridescing, something like that. Now, these twinklings are not going to do that. The most you're gonna get like that, where there's a um, sort of a duochromatic effect going on, would be Iris Petal, which uses a blue uh, ir uh, sparkly particle in the sort of purple, dark blue color. So that one does actually look slightly iridescent. Um, just Peachy, this pink here, also a little iridescent in that the color itself is really more towards a peach or a salmon but the particles inside are kind of a fuchsia color. 
Mango Freeze goes down much lighter than it looks. It's much more mango here. And I think it achieves this color by using a yellow watercolor with an orange particle. Now, Celadon has green particles and it is a green watercolor. And Sea Spray is a turquoise color with turquoise particles. And Royal Satin seems to have purple particles inside of it. So, that is the swatch test for Fine Tech and for Twinkling H2Os. I am sure at some point in the future I will end up doing a video where I use these materials. If you are interested in iridescent paints, but you're not sure if you want to pay for Fine Tech, because Fine Tech is kind of expensive, as I said earlier, their gold seems to be fantastic. Um, and that is, hmm, that is this gold, this is Arabic gold. Now, the gold color in this set is actually this color right here, which is sort of like a very iridescent pink. So, um, it is not actually sort of a rose gold color at all. Now, if you're looking for something more affordable than the fine text, but still uh, sparkly and shimmery, the Niji pearlescent watercolors might be a much better choice in terms of price. Though, as you can see, they're just not nearly as, as pretty. Unfortunately, it's hard for the light to catch that. The Artist Law pearlescent watercolors have more color to them. They're almost like the Twinkling H2Os in that they do actually have a fair bit of color, but the particulate used in almost every color to give the iridescence is white. So you're not going to get as nice, um, you're not gonna get as much iridescence with these as you would with the Fine Tex. You could also try the Zig Pearl watercolors, and I apologize for the shadow, it's cast by my camera, unfortunately. Now, these actually use a, a particle in the watercolor that is the same color, but they are extremely transparent. But I find that in the water, of the watercolors I swatch, these are the closest in behavior, if not necessarily performance, to the fine tack watercolors. Now, as for the Twinkling H2Os, I only have the one set. I only really found that I, I needed the one set because I don't actually use these all that often, so I don't feel like I, I'm missing out by not having loads and loads of them. But these do use colored particles inside to get colored mica, probably, to give the sparkly effect. And I find that it tends to just look a little nicer when the particle is the same color or an iridescing color than when it's just like a white particle in, in a colored paint. So I hope that helped you guys out. I hope it helped you make a decision of some sort. If you have any questions or suggestions, please let me know in the comments below. I would love to hear from you guys. If, you've, if you have maybe tried something that I haven't tried here, let me know that as well. I have mixed um, both Windsor and Newton iridescent medium, which tends to be just pearly white, as well as various FW pearlescent acrylics with watercolors to varying success. And you guys have probably seen some of those on this channel. So I have tried that, but if you have something to recommend that it wasn't covered in any of these watercolor review videos, I would really like to hear from you. And I think I wanna try more of Fine Tech's beautiful gold colors because it's really a very rich gold and I'm quite satisfied with it. So thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, remember to leave a like and consider subscribing because I do these sort of reviews and tutorials pretty frequently. And head on over to the blog at natasoup.blogspot.com for more of my watercolor basic series. And you can find that in the series tags on the left-hand sidebar. So thanks again, guys. Bye.